I don't know if they're still available anymore, but Glade used to do these things called scented oil candles. And basically speaking, it was candles that you put into a special metal dish, and when you lit them, all the candle wax would melt into a bath of like highly fragrant oil. And they did them in various scents, including this one, which is apparently glistening snow aroma. Now, I, I have actually sniffed snow, I'm pretty sure I've sniffed snow, and it doesn't actually smell of anything. Except the yellow stuff. The yellow stuff smells a bit odd. But, um, yeah, I'm not sure about that. However, uh, the technology behind these candles was relatively clever. The wax was quite low melting temperature. And the wick in the middle, um, this is a scene from above and this is seen from the side. It had a wick and a metal cup at the base and a metal fin that went round and actually just skirted on the flame itself and the purpose of that was to actually take some heat from the flame. Now and you put this into a sort of curved bowl that had a little alignment stud in the middle and a magnet underneath it and when you place that in it snapped onto the magnet and the um, candle itself was sort of formed round this wick, it was like that and when you lit it, it would then sort of flow down into this because the heat from there was being transferred down and the, mag the magnet held it on quite tightly so that the heat would couple into this aluminium plate. And then this was actually sat into a, a support, either a glass dish or, or a metal dish that kept it thermally isolated. And it was quite interesting. The only downside to these candles was the price of the refills because... Um, you got the refills. Here's the, obviously this is aimed at a different market. This must be for the American market or something because um, I'm pretty sure the ones in the UK only ever had three candles, and the price was astronomical. I think uh, it was something like five pounds for three candles, and you're paying one pound for a candle here, where you can go into a typical fragrance candle place and for one or two pounds you can get nine. Or you could go into the dollar stores and you could get 15 candles, fragrant candles, for, for a pound. So suddenly uh, a pound per candle doesn't seem that great a deal. Also, when you, if you didn't finish burning it to the point it had run out of wax and you blew it out, then the um, when you try to light it again, it was cold. The wax would have solidified in the base. And when you lit the wick, um, before enough time had uh, elapsed for the heat to go down and melt the wax in the base, the wick had burnt all the uh, wax on the wick itself and then it was just, it wouldn't draw any more wax up and that was pretty much it. So um, I wonder how many people lit it briefly, blew it out and then just ended up with a wasted candle. However, I was thinking, what would happen if you got a little dish like this and you used silicon to stick 24 resistors around it. Um, the reason I've chosen 24 is to get a, a nice convenient 12 volt supply, 1 ohm resistors, 24 resistors to spread the heat, um, and that gives 24 ohms, which on 12 volts is half an amp, 500 milliamps, uh, which would give 6 watts of power. And it certainly it feels quite hot. I'm just going to get the thermal camera powered up here so you can see what temperature it is. So, the ambient temperature in the background is, once again, it's quite cold. It's 11 degrees to 12 degrees in here. It's not very hot at all. But if I point it now at the... Um, oops, sorry, I'll, I'll actually let you guys see it here. If I point it at the heated base, then it's showing a temperature of about almost 60 degrees centigrade, which is quite uh, quite hot, actually. It's certainly... Yeah, that is pretty hot to the touch. I wouldn't like to hold my hands on that all the time, in fact. That does get quite hot. So, um, now I've done that, theoretically, if I was to put a candle in this without the, a standard tea light candle, I was to take it out of its uh, cover and stick it in into here. So let's uh, see if I can just slip it out its sleeve here and just place it into the middle and then get another candle for comparison and place it on its own because I don't know if you guys get the same thing maybe it's just because Britain's a wee bit colder than other parts of the world um, 
you buy a tea light candle, you light it, and you end up with... It, it burns out long before it's used all the wax. It'd be nice if it did burn at all, but it doesn't. So um, you end up with quite a large rim of wax inside. So I thought it'd be quite interesting now to compare the uh, these two and light them both and just leave them for a while. So I'll do that and then I'll come back. So I'll go and light that now. I'll light them both at the same time for comparison purposes. Okay, and then um, I'll leave it for a while and then we'll see what happens. Well, so far so good. The wax has melted completely, although I see a set of ridge at this end, and it makes me wonder if I should have actually brought more resistors up to actually cover the uh, higher part of the dish. I didn't think the wax was going to fill it that much. But, um, yep, it's working well so far. The wax is mostly melted except for that slight lip there, and uh, we'll give it a bit more time and we'll see how well it burns down. Well, some considerable time later, and this one has finally burnt out and used most of its wax. It burnt with quite a large flame. This one has been burning with a tiny flame, and I don't know if that's because of maybe a slight element of air starvation, because I see, I see a lot of um, visible vapour rising off this, so I get the feeling the wax might be a bit too hot. But then on the other hand, it's forming a slight... Uh, it's not really melting at the at the this end. Uh, so there's a bit of a science involved here. I'm not 100% sure. I do know that um, in earlier experiments I did a while back, creating something similar, uh, if I found out uh, quite quickly that if you put a, a heater underneath, dead centre underneath the flame, you really, it, it gets too hot in that area. It doesn't need a heater in the middle because the flame itself provides all the heat in that, that area. So I'm going to do some more experimentation. I might try another candle. Um, and run it at a lower voltage so that the resistors give off less heat. Um, but so far, I mean, it's working okay to a degree, but not working perfectly. So I think this uh, warrants a bit further experimentation. But it may be the um, locations of the resistors uh, aren't perfectly ideal for this. Hmm, tricky. So I'm trying it again with different candles, and uh, this one has just suddenly uh, explosively spilled its wax out this end, and it's now on the plate. These are um, lower profile candles with less wax, um, and quite a nice smell actually. They're sort of their toasted marshmallow smell, and it does smell like this a fruity marshmallow um, smell. So I'm going to see how that works in this plate because I've changed it. This is um, now running on 10 volts, which means that for the same resistance it's passing about 400 milliamps and that's going to give it a power dissipation of 4 watts. So maybe that's going to be too cold, maybe it's not going to keep the wax hot enough. There's only one way to find out and that's to let them burn. Well again, sometime later, and this one has burnt out. It didn't use all its wax up, but that's uh, not uncommon. It burnt with a big flame all the way down. This one ha started with a modestly sized flame, then it went down small, then it went big, and now it's gone down really small again. And that's the uh, same behaviour that the other one exhibited. I also had to turn the power back up to the full wattage. I had to turn the voltage back up to 12 volts, which gives about 6 watts to fully melt the wax, because otherwise it was just forming a ridge, it just wasn't melting properly. So that seems to be the optimum temperature, although yesterday with the big flame of the other candle, it um, that higher temperature resulted in a sort of lot of waxy vapour coming off. So it's hard to say. I think it's, it's, like most things, it looks quite simple, but it's actually a very critical thing. So I'm going to leave this one burning and uh, I think it will use all the wax up, but it's going to take its time, obviously, because um, the flame is really quite tiny. Let's see if I can actually show you just how small the flame is. Yeah, it's still lit. That's all I can really say about it. So, um, yes, it, it appears to be quite a scientific thing. The other thing I considered was the use of the PTC thermistor, but then again, Without specific PTC thermistor element, which would regulate its temperature, I think you'd have to find a source of the heating ones that were specifically designed to get up to a specific temperature based on the size of the uh, dish, and you'd have to find a way to spread it about. 
So all quite uh, all quite complex science really, and it all cantilevers on the. Ultimately, you can't just use any old candle because the flame size will quite affect it quite dramatically. But I am um, all interesting and quite enjoyable to play about with anyway.